Hello, nature lovers, and welcome to another exciting episode of Environmental Systems and Societies. Today's video is all about getting to know the ecosystem terminology. The first one is species, and we're really looking at how we classify life and the things that contribute to life. And so, species is a particular type of organism, and it's um, it's in all any organism is the same. So humans, giraffes, Scots pines, aardvarks, purple thumb flowers, E. coli bacteria, they're all the same. And what makes them the real important definition is they have to be able to breed and their babies have to be able to breed. So this mule is not a species because this mule can be born, its parents bred a donkey and a horse and they had the baby, but the baby can't breed even when it's grown up. Okay. So that's what defines a species. Now the way we actually write a species name is a scientific name and we capitalize the genus. We do not capitalize the species name, but we underline both of them. So here's some examples for human, and giraffe, and pine. Um, now when we take all the different species in an area, or not all the species, but all the individuals of one species, we call that a population. So all the snails that are the same species in a pond, we call that a population. All the gray squirrels that we find in Drury, we call that a population. And we're going to discuss population a lot. We'll talk about how population size change, how the environment affects populations. We typically look at populations instead of individuals. So it's really just a group of individuals. Now what's kind of interesting is they all have to be in the same area. So if we take a snail, the snail example, and we take a pond and we divide that pond in half into two ponds, now we have two populations. That's how we look at that. A habitat is the environment where you normally find a species or where it likes to live. And it's it's made up of all these physical characteristics, abiotic factors, right? Sunlight and temperature and climate and seasons. You put all that together and that helps define what the habitat something is. But it's not just the physical characteristics, it's also the biotic characteristics that already live there. So for example, a prairie chicken has to live within certain grasses. It has to have certain grasses to eat, to hide in, to make its nest out of, to lay its eggs in. And lots of different species might share a habitat. So this prairie king snake or this field mouse, all three of those share the same habitat. But you can't share the same niche. Okay, So make sure you know that. Uh, habitat you can share, niche you cannot. A niche is how uh, organism makes a living and it's kind of weird um, to speak it's really all the interactions they do it's every interaction so the competition it's what they eat it's how they exchange air everything about them and it's specific to one thing so only one species can occupy a niche more than one individual but only one species can an example is if you have a large omnivore that eats uh, berries and mice and dead animals and poops out seeds and spreads seeds around. Well, that could be a polar bear or a grizzly bear. What happens if they both try to live together? They're going to compete. They're going to fight. And one is going to live and stay, and one's going to leave, dead or alive. And that's who determines who occupies that niche in an area. Now, community is a group of all the different populations that live in one area. So if we look at a prairie, kind of using that as our theme today, You've got the prairie chickens, you've got the cone flowers, you've got the blue sedge grass, but all the grasses and all the flowers and all the plants you find on a prairie combine with all the animals and all the bacteria and all the fungus and they all come together to make that, okay? Which sounds like an ecosystem and it kind of is, it's like a little tiny one. An ecosystem is really all of the different communities put together that are found in an area, all the communities that are kind of the same found in an area, we call that an ecosystem. The ecosystems can be really small like water or really big like the Sahara Desert, right? It can be either way. And there's lots of different kinds of ecosystems. So you've got forests, of course, and you've got mountains, and you've got the taiga, and you've got the tundra, and you've got lakes, and you've got rivers, and you've got savannas, and you've got alpine meadows, and you have the human body even. You have lots and lots of different ecosystems, and the scale depends on the organisms that live there. Now, a biome is a collection of all the same types of ecosystems, okay? So you have deserts and you have the tundra like this, but there's lots of other kinds. And the really interesting thing, though, is that there's different kinds of deserts and there's different kinds of, of tundras. So 
You have the Sahara Desert, which you just saw that you're used to, but here's the Gobi Desert in China, and it's freezing, it's covered with snow, okay? Here you've got the tropical rainforest that everybody thinks about in the Amazon, and here you've got a temperate rainforest in Washington State. And so, it can be both, okay? Um, now, here you've got a biosphere, and the biosphere is really everywhere on the planet Earth we find life, and we find it in the bottom of the ocean, and we find it in the top of the atmosphere, and we find it in a super thin layer of the land on the Earth, the lithosphere. So it's the atmosphere, the hydrosphere, the lithosphere. And it's only about 21 kilometers big, and I hope this makes it all clear. If it doesn't, as always, please let me know. Otherwise, peace out, homie.